Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about sunscreens. I'm going to sort of talk about the evolution of sunscreens and what I would call the three generations of sunscreens and then go into a little bit more depth about the current or third generation, which I like to call a medical grade sunscreen, and what you can look for and expect to be able to find in a sunscreen. So if this is something that interests you, uh, please feel free to subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, like this video, and if you like, you can hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I post a new video. So historically, sunscreens were mineral-based sunscreens, and they were uh, the sunscreens we all know for leaving that lovely pasty white cast. Um, if you had that nice white cast, you knew you were protected from a sunburn and skin cancer, but it didn't look so attractive. So that was sort of that first generation of sunscreen. Then that evolved to chemical actives, the chemical sunscreens, which were very welcome because they had a beautiful finish, they were lightweight, and there was no white cast whatsoever. So those gained popularity. And over time, science showed that the actives in the in the chemical sunscreens have nanoparticles, which are so tiny that they penetrate through our skin and can get into our bloodstream. So much so that days after cessation of use of the sunscreen, the nanoparticles can still be detected in the bloodstream. Now, science hasn't shown that they necessarily do any harm, but just because it hasn't been proven doesn't mean it's been disproven either. So in my opinion, why expose yourself to something unknown when you can stay on the safe side and find an amazing product? So that's, that's uh, the second generation of chemical sunscreens. Now, in addition to the nanoparticles, chemical sunscreens don't offer the broad spectrum of protection, meaning the entire light spectrum that covers the UVA and UVB rays. And so it's often put together piecemeal where you need several different compounds. And you can see in the ingredients list in a chemical sunscreen, you often have anywhere from two to four different chemical ingredients because they, off, they uh, cover the different little snippets of that light spectrum. And oftentimes they will also add a little bit of a mineral sunscreen to sort of to broaden the coverage of the UVA and UVB light range. And then we get into the third generation, which is the modern current generation of sunscreens, um, which I want to get into a little bit more depth about. So the reason why I think this video is uh, worth making is because um, sunscreen is far more important than a lot of people realize. Because if you think about it, sunscreen is really the only skincare ingredient that you use that you apply that many times or that you apply multiple times throughout the day. Your hydrator or your moisturizer usually goes on twice a day. Your serums may go on once to twice a day, but your sunscreen can be applied five or six, up to you know five or six or however many times a day depending on where you are and what you're doing. So if you do have one skincare product that you apply with such frequency, you why wouldn't you want it to do the most possible for your skin? And so what does that mean? The sunscreens I'm thinking of that I'm describing are sunscreens that are 100% mineral. They have no nanoparticles. So for me, that's the starting point. What you can expect to find in a high quality modern sunscreen is excellent UVA and UVB protection, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, protection from pollution, so basically protection from free radicals, protection from high energy blue light, which we primarily get uh, from the sun, solar uh, high energy blue light, but also from our devices, our screens, tablets, computer screens, things like that, um, and infrared radiation. So UVA, UVB, pollution, infrared and high energy blue light. Those are things you can expect to find in a modern sunscreen. 
So with UVB, uh, that's pretty simple. Um, the minerals that are used are um, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Zinc oxide essentially covers the entire spectrum, but it peaks at or works best at the UVB uh, light range. And then titanium dioxide works on the UVA light range. So the UVB protection is the SPF and the UVA protection is the PA, which most sunscreens don't give you a PA rating. It's a Japanese rating that uh, is written in plus signs and the maximum rating is four pluses. And generally sunscreens have two pluses and if they're really good, they have three pluses. Um, but now certain sunscreens like Skin Better Science and Color Science offer the four pluses. So it's the best PA uh, protection that is available. So that's the first thing is you can look at the SPF and the PA. The second thing is pollution. So what that essentially means is free radicals and that translates into antioxidants. So it's sort of the same reason why you would put on an antioxidant serum or a vitamin C serum in the morning or in the evening. Th these types of ingredients can now be found in sunscreens. Um, so you can look for things like not grass, coenzyme Q, green tea. These types of things are antioxidants. They also um, offer hydration. So you can find ingredients like niacinamide in skincare, which are great um, for people with redness, with rosacea, with sensitivity. Niacinamide is very soothing. A lot of them have glycerin, so you can have um, hydrating properties. You can also find skin soothing ingredients like pro vitamin B5 or squalene to help boost the skin barrier. These are all ingredients that work together synergistically to protect you from the sun's rays, but also to protect you essentially from a multitude of other factors that can cause premature aging, while in addition strengthening essentially your your skin barrier by hydrating it, protecting it, and keeping it in integrity. So if a sunscreen does all that, that is basically with sophisticated technology and research. There are a few companies that I'm a big fan of. I won't discuss them in this video because I sort of wanted this to be just an overview of what you can look for in a sunscreen and why some may cost, you know, four times more than others. And so that you know exactly what you want in a sunscreen. Do you care that it has chemical actives? Do you care if it protects you from blue light or pollution? So you, with this knowledge, you can sort of find a suitable sunscreen for you. In addition, I will say that if you are looking at just an exclusively mineral sunscreen, um, the higher the concentration of the zinc oxide and titanium oxide, the better. Usually one of those should be a minimum of 7%. Or higher they do they go up to 10% even 12% or higher so always look at the percentage of the active ingredient to know if if it's enough that's in there so I hope you found this helpful I hope uh, you feel armed with knowledge when you go suns uh, sunscreen shopping and I will make a few additional videos going specifically into different brands and explaining what they offer in their sunscreens. So those will be my, my favorite sunscreens. So I'll see you next time. Bye, take care. Today I'm gonna be talking about the Skin Better Science sunscreens. So if you're interested in learning more about Skin Better Science or the differences between the sunscreens, keep on watching.